Thank you, Ms. Clark. Uh, we will now proceed under the five-minute rule with questions. Uh, the chair um, will recognize myself for five minutes. Uh, Ms. Clark, in a June 2020 op-ed, you wrote, quote, I advocate for defunding policing operations that have made African Americans more vulnerable to police violence and contributed to mass incarceration while investing more in programs and police policies that address critical community needs. Since that time, in summer of 2020, there have been significant drops in recruiting police nationwide, uh, significant uh, uh, evidence of morale dropping for our police officers and communities across the country. Just a simple statement, do you stand behind that statement in the op-ed that you wrote in the summer of 2020 advocating, quote, for defunding police policing operations? My, microphone, ma'am. The Justice Department fully supports funding uh, and supporting our law enforcement Well, but officers. my question was different than that. I mean, you penned it, and you are the head of the Civil Rights Division, and you penned the op-ed in the summer of 2020 in, in the middle, in the midst of significant unrest around the country where our law enforcement community was dealing with significant attacks on them. And you wrote, I advocate for defunding policing operations. Do you stand by that statement? Um, I, I've not advocated for defunding uh, law enforcement. At the Justice Department, we allocate millions of dollars by way of our Office of Justice Programs, COPS Office, so, Office of Violence so, Against Women, so to support I, I law enforcement. The time to answer on the question. The question is just simple. You wrote that statement. Do you stand behind that statement, or do you now repudiate that statement? I, I have not advocated for defunding law enforcement, uh, Chairman. And I appreciate the difficult jobs that our law enforcement officers do each day to keep us safe and believe it's important that they have the resources to carry out their jobs. Well, importantly, black Americans make up 36% of violent crime victims, but only 14% of the population. Do you think defunding the police, as you wrote in an op-ed in June of 2020, it's in writing, uh, do you think defunding the police makes African Americans, black community, more vulnerable to violence? Um, I support uh, ensuring that law enforcement have the resources and support needed to carry out their jobs. Public safety is a top priority for all of us. Um, I would note that the city of Austin and the Travis County DA's office sent you a joint letter just, I think, yesterday or maybe the day before, announcing that 17 of the 21 Austin Police Department officers indicted for alleged excessive force violations between May 29 and May 31 in that summer of unrest were cleared. We had 17 laws, law enforcement officers who were indicted by the local DA, and then they were suddenly cleared. But then they sent a letter the same day requesting that the DOJ Civil Rights Division investigate the Austin Police Department, despite the fact the Austin Police Department had been a model for the Department of Justice how to engage in the use of force. My question for you is, will you investigate the uh, district attorney for having indicted 17 police officers and then suddenly walking away for a political safe phasing uh, rather than investigating the police department? Um, I'm not aware of that correspondence. Um, I'm happy to look into this matter further, Chairman. Well, I, I would look forward to working with your office to do that. It's, it's, it's extraordinarily concerning. Um, in your written testimony, you mentioned that DOJ has prosecuted FACE Act violations involving both abortion providers and pregnancy resource centers. Can you tell us um, how many FACE Act cases have been filed uh, since it was enacted in 1994? Um, so, the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances uh, Act is an important law. We apply it even-handedly. I don't have statistics on the number of cases since the law's would it, passage. Would it surprise you that the data I have says that it's been brought uh, 130 times since 1994? Because then my question is, is how many FACE Act cases have been filed in defense of abortion providers or in defense of pro-abortion activists versus how many FACE Act cases have been filed in defense of pro-life Americans or churches that have been uh, attacked? And I wonder if you know the data on those. Well, the I, I believe uh, in outreach and have been aggressively con conducting outreach to all groups so that uh, the public understands that the FACE Act applies to both 
pro-choice and pro-life groups. And I will flag for you, Chairman, that we uh, recently had January indictments against two Florida residents for spray painting threats on I, pregnancy resource, resource centers. And I certainly, I certainly con uh, appreciate that you all did that, but I, the numbers I have are out of 130 uses of the FACE Act since 1994, 126 were for pro-abortion activists and for in defense of uh, abortion providers, and four have been for pro-life Americans and or churches. And I think that was one of them in January. I'd let you respond to that and then I'll, I'll be, I'm, I'm out of my time. Well, I, while I can't speak to um, what happened in prior administrations, what I can assure you is that the division is committed to full and even-handed enforcement of this important federal law. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Uh, Mr. Cohen. Thank you for coming before this committee and thank you for your work and dedication to seeing that the Constitution is properly protected and that people are given the rights that are 